I wanted to know what sex felt like, so I took your manicure tool and I put it in. <laughs> masturbating um, I ended up in the emergency room uh, and it happened because I went through this super awkward puberty leading up to it like when I was 15 that was the year that all of my friends lost their virginity and I was the only one who hadn't yet so I felt really left out like my friends would talk about their favorite positions at lunch and I would just bury myself in my sandwich like oh cool anal mm. like, <laughs> I was so naive. I had a very Lisa Simpson vibe in school. Uh, like a guy passed me a note in math class that just said 69 on it. And I didn't know what that meant yet. I thought he was starting a math game with me. <laughs> so I just built onto it. I was like, 69 divided by three is 23, your turn. <laughs> He was like, the fuck? No, this is not what you think this is. And I got teased for not knowing, and I just, like, I kind of snapped, right? Like, there was too many things building up. I was so sick of feeling left out and clueless, and I was sick of waiting for a boyfriend to lose my virginity to. So I got this crazy idea, and I was like, okay, I'm going to stick something up there so that I'll know what sex feels like, and I can feel cooler around my friends. Um, I know how mentally unstable this sounds, <laughs> by the way. Anytime you go the homemade dildo route, never a great idea. <laughs> but I was so desperate to fit in that I just decided to take matters into my own pussy. So, you know, I was like, this is happening now. So, so I went home from school uh, and I decided to like, you know, look around the house for an object to lose my virginity to. Um, <laughs> You know, and just like anyone's first time, I was super nervous. I'm like, oh my God. Um, and I went to my mom's bathroom closet because it was just full of like phallic wonders, right? Just like Sonicare toothbrush handles and travel size shampoo bottles. But the thing that really caught my eye was she had this handheld manicure tool. Um, you could put little attachments on top to like buff your nails, but the handle was shaped like a dick. Uh, a little too much like a dick, by the way. Like, whoever designed it was definitely targeting curious teenage girls <laughs> and lonely housewives. Uh, it was bright blue. It looked like Papa Smurf's boner. Just, ugh, just so awkward. The only problem I didn't notice at the time was that it was made of a grippy rubber material. Yeah, there's a little foreshadowing for you. Um, but again, I knew nothing about that hole and like what should or shouldn't go in there. Um, so, so I draw my pants and I, you know, put my foot up on the side of the tub, as you do. Um, you know, hi, sir, by the way, this is weird for both of us. And I, uh, I started to try and, you know, like make this happen, but I'm not aroused by anything that's going on. Frankly, I'm terrified so I'm as dry as a dead man's mouth. <laughs> like my body is not helping me at all. So that combined with this grippy rubber material, it's like a kid trying to go down an unsoaked slip and slide. It's just like. <laughs> Nothing. So I stop for a sec and the sane part of my brain is like, dude, this is clearly not meant to be. You just need to wait to have regular person sex. 
And then the crazy part of my brain was like, I'm not a fucking quitter. <laughs> Marty crouched over naked like Gollum. Like, we've come this far. Let's just throw the Hail Mary. So all of my desperation to fit in fueled my tiny pubescent wrist until I fit the manicure tool all the way inside of me. And then I just stood there frozen for a second with it and be like, oh. And then I threw it out and I threw it in the trash and I got in the shower to like wash the shame off. <laughs> and I knew that something was horribly wrong right away because I started to feel a burning and itching sensation. And I was like, oh fuck, okay. I'll look at it with a mirror and maybe it will look fine. <laughs> What I saw in that mirror still haunts my dreams to this day. My crotch had swollen shut. Closed like the bank on a Sunday. My pussy looked like Rocky's eye turned sideways. <laughs> No bueno. <laughs> so my stomach dropped. I was like, oh my God, I need medical attention. I'm gonna have to tell a doctor exactly what I just did. <laughs> but before that, I'm gonna have to tell my mom because I need somebody to drive me to the doctor's office. Like my puberty is just flashing before my eyes. Everything's coming to an end. So my mom is in bed at this point. She's doing like a crossword puzzle or something, momsy. <laughs> I walk in pale as a ghost. She sees me, she's like, what's going on with you? What's wrong? And I was like, um, I don't know how to tell you this because you're never gonna see me the same way again. <laughs> she was like, sweetie, nothing you tell me can make me stop loving you. <laughs> and I was like, Let's not say things we can't take back. <laughs> I was like, um, I wanted to know what sex felt like, so I took your manicure tool and I put it... <laughs> I put it inside me and now my vagina's gone. <laughs> And my mom was like, wow. Well, we were gonna have corn dogs for dinner, but now that seems like a safety hazard, so. She's like, all right, get in the car. Here we go, go to the doctor's office. So we drove down to the emergency clinic. I grew up in this tiny town. I've been seeing the same family doctor since I was like five years old. He's this 60-year-old Christian man. Very Steve from Blue's Clues type of energy. <laughs> Not great for the situation. He has no idea how to handle it. He's just like, okay, Kelsey, um, we're all a little confused as to what you did. <laughs> um, something with a, a manicure tool? I, Susan, do you know? Nope, nobody knows. Okay. <sighs> Um, do I need to have a little look-see at your undercarriage? I'm like, just put me down like an old animal. Oh my God, I can't do this. So he straps on his miner's headlight. <laughs> to go spelunking for treasure. And he goes down and he pokes around with a Q-tip a little bit and he comes back up and he's like, all right, so you know, from all the swelling and burning and inflammation, I can deduce that you are allergic to latex. So, you know, going forward, that means no latex condoms, uh, no latex gloves. Uh, please don't do anything with balloon animals. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. 
So I left the clinic that day with that knowledge that I'm allergic to latex. Um, all my future boyfriends have been very happy about that, right? You know, just high fives all around, no condoms. Uh, I'm just riddled with disease. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't redeem my awkward reputation at school. You know, I did all that to try and fit in and instead word spread around the school of what happened and everybody was like, hey, old Harry Bush made her pussy disappear. Check that out. <laughs> the world's worst magician over here. I was so embarrassed. Like, this haunted me for 10 years. I was just mortified about it. And I honestly thought I was done with my latex encounters until two years ago when I moved to Los Angeles and I went to a new doctor for my annual exam. And I was lying back on the table. He did the whole like fingers inside your business. And then I sat up as he was taking his gloves off. And I was like, oh no. I was like, are those latex gloves? And he was like, yeah. Um, do you have an allergy? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, what happens when you come into contact with it? And I was like, my vagina tries to kill itself. <laughs> and he was like, oh, shoot. Okay, well, there's not much I can do for you right now. Um, I can prescribe you some cream that you can spread down there. I was like, it's not a bagel. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So he writes me this prescription and he walks out and I'm just standing there so pissed. I'm like, there's no way I'm going through this again. Like there has to be a way around this. So my survival instincts kicked in and I locked the doctor's office door behind me and I got another crazy idea. I was like, okay, I'm gonna masturbate because if I can make myself come, I might be able to flush out the allergens. <laughs> before a reaction starts. I think Bill Nye would be pretty proud of my plan. There's obviously no scientific research behind this at all, but I was just like, I just have to try this. I have to go for it. I'm also standing there like, I can't believe that 10 years ago I tried masturbating and I gave myself an allergic reaction and now I'm gonna masturbate to try to not have an allergic reaction. <laughs> really a decade of doing the Lord's work, this one. So. I'm racing against the clock at this point. Like this reaction is coming. So I draw my pants and I just like, I close my eyes. I try to like find a way to be turned on. I just, I picture that Channing Tatum's behind me just like, you know, grinding it out to some pony by Genuine, you know, just like really encouraging me. And by the power of Magic Mike, I came and I did not have an allergic reaction. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta be your own douche. Uh, and now I think I should get the letters RX tattooed on these two fingers. <laughs> so the only prescription I need, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, I'm Kelsey Cook. Thanks so much. Kelsey Cook, everybody, give it up for Kelsey Cook.